listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. Today is also the feast day of a saint from the 100s, an important saint named Irenaeus of Lyon. Before we talk about his incredible story and the deep impact that he's had on the church, however, please join me in praying the Come Holy Spirit prayer that we too may be filled with the Holy Spirit and become saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So like I said, today is the feast day of Irenaeus of Lyon. So yesterday, we went back to the three and four hundreds to talk about Cyril of Alexandria. Today, we're going back even further to the one hundreds. So the super beautiful thing about St. Irenaeus of Lyon is that through his story, we can see how the faith spread and how it continues to spread today. So Irenaeus of Lyon, he was actually born in what is modern day Turkey, a place called Smyrna. And so at the time when he lived there and grew up, there was a man named Polycarp, who was the bishop, a very holy man. In fact, he is sort of remembered as one of the first real martyrs for the faith. Even his his body and his clothing was collected after he died and venerated some of the first earliest relics that we have in the church are from St. Polycarp, an incredibly holy man who wrote beautifully about the faith and inspired the people under his care to just give themselves fully to Jesus. So that is who instructed St. Irenaeus in the faith. But do you know who Polycarp learned the faith from? Well, he learned it from a man named John. And John oftentimes refers to himself as the beloved apostle. John had been a fisherman in Galilee before Jesus himself called John and his brother James to come and follow him and be his apostle. So this is how the faith has spread. Jesus taught John. John taught Polycarp. Polycarp taught Irenaeus. And Irenaeus taught many people. And of course, this is a long time ago in the 100s. This was also when the church was being heavily persecuted. So I really wish that we could keep that chain going and we could say, okay, Irenaeus taught this person who taught that person who taught this person on and on and on in a big old chain until it finally gets to us. Because although we can't see that because there's so many generations and so many people between Irenaeus and us, that is actually exactly how the faith has spread. And I'm telling you this to inspire you because Jesus, this was his plan for this faith to spread from one person to one person through conversation. Although we live in a world where I'm here podcasting into your kitchen or your car and you live many miles away and perhaps we have never met, I hope that you are learning some interesting things. But the truth of the matter is, is that in person, real relationships and conversations continues to be how the faith passes from one person to the next. And the most common way that we learn the faith is from our parents, also from our friends, from our siblings, from our parish priest who we talk to, who we are next to sometimes. And so I just want to inspire you that although we can't see the chain all the way back to the 100s, that is how it has been and that is how it will always be. 
So what does St. Irenaeus do on his own so that he's a great saint? Well, after he learned the faith from St. Polycarp, he was sent to France, specifically to a region named called Lyon. And so it was there that he went to serve the bishop. Unfortunately, while Irenaeus was off running an errand to Rome, a terrible persecution came to the area and the bishop there was martyred. So when he returned, the people asked Irenaeus to be their new bishop, and he agreed, and he served as bishop for over 20 years. Now, he was very smart. He, too, did lots of work fighting heretics, and he really discerned with the gift of the Holy Spirit what was true so he could teach the faith well. St. Irenaeus is credited with proclaiming the four gospels that we have today. Now, you can imagine that in the hundred years after Jesus died, many people were writing about him. And some of those people weren't actually good people. They were writing things that weren't true, doctrine that was not right. And St. Irenaeus, guided by the Holy Spirit, was able to discern that the four Gospels, which we should look to as we're understanding our lives as Christians, are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. St. Irenaeus also defeated a heresy called Gnosticism. He also promoted apostolic succession. Now, quickly, apostolic succession means that when Jesus was here on earth, he chose his 12 apostles. He sent them out to baptize in his name and also to ordain priests. So we think of it in this way, that those early apostles were bishops. And when they died, they appointed a successor. Now, we think of a bishop today by his hat and his robes and his cathedral. None of those things existed at the time, and yet the work of the bishop was the same, to proclaim the truth, to be guided by the Holy Spirit, to spread the faith, and to be responsible for a flock of faithful, to guide them and protect them. And so St. Irenaeus defended the apostolic succession, meaning that one bishop dies, they are replaced by another, and the Holy Spirit continues to guide the people in those offices. He also lived during a difficult time where the church was still figuring things out. In particular, they couldn't decide when Easter was. And as you likely know, Easter changes. One year it's at the end of March, the next year it's a few weeks into April. And it took the church a while to figure out how to know when Easter was. And these debates became so difficult that some people almost left the church over them. Irenaeus was an incredible peacemaker, very prayerful man who lived during a difficult time and steadily proclaimed the truth revealed through the Holy Spirit. At the end of his life, even St. Irenaeus died a martyr for the faith. And so Sprouts, my challenge for you is to actually, if you can, Go back and pray our Holy Spirit prayer again. This is such a powerful prayer. And as we talk about these early Christians who were just living during a very confusing time, trying to figure out exactly what was true, what was not true, and how to build up Christ's church, they did not do this on their own. They did it guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is still here, active in this world and we can call on him and his gifts to guide us. So let's pray that prayer one more time. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey there, Sprouts. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. If you're looking for some fun activities to do on hot afternoons or raining mornings, check out our Catholic Sprouts resource library. It is packed with things ready to be printed and used, fun activities, coloring sheets, games, lots and lots of stuff, all free, all ready for you. Just check the notes for this podcast episode to get the link.
This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.